Are you wondering how difficult it is to get fire insurance in Montana? A lot of people want to live out in spots like this, but it's getting more and more difficult to get insurance. In this video, I'll go over the things that can greatly increase your rates and things you can look for in a property that will keep your rates low. All right, so I climbed all the way up this mountain to give you a better view of Montana. So the least you can do is subscribe to our channel. And when you do, don't forget to hit the little bell and you'll be notified every time we make a new video about Montana. As with any insurance, I can't give you exact costs, but I can give you the things that the companies look for when they give you a quote. So every property will be given a fire score. And one of the big things that they look at in Montana is whether or not your house is within seven miles of a fire department. And as you know, if you've been here, a lot of places are way beyond seven miles to a fire department. So what does that do for your insurance? Well, there are one or two companies that will cover you if you're beyond seven miles. But the problem is, is obviously you want more companies involved to get a better rate. So the farther, the farther you are from a fire hall, the less companies there are that will insure you, which means your rates are gonna get higher. One of the companies I know that will insure you out in this area is Safeco. And I have a friend and I've done a video with him uh, last year on fires, who is an insurance agent who gave me all this information. And I will put all his information down in the show notes if you wanna give him a call and he can give you exact quotes on things. Another thing they look at in that fire score, no matter where you are from the fire department, is how hard your house is to access. One of the things we learned in the video I did last year is that if you have a bunch of switchbacks going up, if you live up on top of a hill, fire goes faster uphill, so they look at that. They look at one of the things I never thought of is when the, how wide your access is into your house and if there's enough room, if there is a fire, uh, for fire trucks to get in there and turn around. Because what, what happens in these major forest fires is they have to start determining which houses can be saved and how, how they can access it and how they can help you if your house is in the, in the line of fire. So the other thing they're gonna take into consideration, the obvious thing is the replacement cost of your house. So the interesting thing about that is, you know, if you have a house on a half acre lot or a house on a 40 acre lot, the house on the 40 acre lot is gonna be valued a lot more even though the replacement cost would be the same as if it was on a one acre lot. So a lot of people think, oh, I have this $700,000 house, million dollar house because it's on 10 acres. The, the insurance company isn't gonna look at that and they're gonna base it on the replacement value, uh, you know, what it would cost to replace it. And they also go as far as looking at, you know, if it's a, a wildfire like that and it it burns the place to the ground, would the foundation be able to be reused in that situation? And then that will obviously help and, and it wouldn't cost as much to replace if that is the case with your that particular house. So a little story about the replacement costs. I had some people call me about a year ago and they were part of that fire. I don't know if you remember down in Colorado, uh, just outside of Denver, I believe it was, where an entire subdivision got wiped out. And these people were, you know, they lost their house. And what they told me back then was, back to the replacement costs, that nobody had enough insurance because when everybody got insurance, the market hadn't jumped up to where it was <laughs> after the fire. And so that's another thing to keep in mind. And I had a long talk with my buddy Scott about this yesterday you have to keep in mind that, you know, your replacement cost today may be totally different than what it is a year from now. And so they have this other thing called extended warranty. And it's kind of like the, uh, you know, when you go to Best Buy and, or all those places and they always try and get you to add on the warranty. Well, with this, in this particular case, it's not a bad idea because the last thing you want to do, if you're in this situation where your house does burn down, they're gonna cut you a check for 500 grand. 
well, that's great it, unless you get, you know, to the rebuilding process and you're almost done and you've already used up your 500,000, then it's coming out of your pocket. What this extended thing does is it adds, you can do 25%. He said even 100% a lot of people do because it's so much cheaper to, well, I don't know why you wouldn't do it. In fact, he gave me some numbers and they're kind of crazy uh, how this works, but here's the numbers he gave me. So he had just done a bid for a guy and the guy wanted $500,000 worth of insurance on the house. And the house was 1,800 square feet. It was on a 10 acre lot. Again, the lot size doesn't really matter. Uh, it was within seven miles of a fire department. And the quote he got for him, it was $1,673 a year. But like I said, for 100%, basically, instead of $500,000 coverage, it went up to a million. It was only, uh, instead of sixteen seventy three a year, it was only seventeen twenty, which is 50 some dollars. So I, <laughs> I don't know, I, I'm not sure why they just don't, you know, add that in, but that was the quote he got. And the other big thing you need to keep in mind too is like for this particular guy, he had a huge shop that he built as well. Well, these, these quotes, you have to get a separate one for the accessory buildings. So the one that the quote they're going to give you on your house is just for the house. If you've got a $200,000 shop sitting on the other side of your property, you need to get separate insurance for that as well. So I talked about it a little earlier, but I did a video last year with Scott and some DNRC representatives and some fire people and some a lot of fire experts from around the country and we actually toured a property and it's a great video it goes totally in depth on everything we talked about it goes way more in depth and if you want to watch that I'll put it right up here and it's a it's a great video you should check it out thank you for watching our video please call text or email for more information and don't forget to watch our other videos about Montana